Hi all and welcome into this how-to video. In this video I'm going to be discussing which sim racing monitors to look for. Um, this is a tough subject because there's lots of confusing numbers being thrown at you. There's even some uh, marketing annoyances with terms to response time. So I thought I'd um, go through PC Park Bigger with you, uh, run through my thought process on how to pick the right monitor for yourselves. But really what I'm trying to do is empower you to pick your own one because um, the monitors, the monitor or monitors you choose really is up to you based on um, how much room you have, how much power your GPU has, um, budget. So it's very difficult for me to do a one size fit all. So I'll try and cover all aspects of it, but um, just bear in mind I'm trying to teach you how to pick more than telling you how to pick. But then again, if your requirements end up being the same as mine, then by all means, pick the one I pick. All right, let's get into it. First of all, I'm on PCParkPicker.com. I find this website brilliant when I'm searching for hardware because it allows you to compare from hundreds of stores online, reviews, filter down by criteria that we're going to look for, rather than just um, shopping around. Um, this is a great tool that I that works great for me. Okay, so let's head over to monitors. Right, so as you can see, we have 2,865 monitors to pick from. Uh, we don't need any compatibility filter. Um, and the merchants we've got allowed are all the names you're seeing here. Now, depending on your country and region, that might be different. And if there are a few stores that you do not wish to buy from, uh, just manually tick the stores, the merchants that you're looking for, and that will help filter that down. Because otherwise you might get a skewed price that um, wasn't valid because it's not carried at a store you would use. So first of all, let's order by price. Now... Okay, so here's the price filter. I'm going to leave that for the moment. I'll use that once we've drilled down and uh, we have a smaller selection of monitors. Manufacturer, again, there are plenty to choose from. This is actually the manufacturer of the monitor. Uh, once again, I'll leave that there. We'll talk about that after. Okay, first things first, aspect ratio. So the most common sized monitor, especially if you're looking at triples, is going to be 16 by 9. Um, that gives you that 1080p natural resolution. It's a good trade-off with width to height ratio, especially for sim racing. Um, and it's the most popular monitor. So by choice of price, it's going to be a great choice. We'll get into ultra wides after we've um, taken a look at the 16 by 9 variants. Variants. So all the information I'm going to give you is applicable for triples and singles. But bear in mind, if you do make a single monitor choice, um, and it's not an ultra wide and you're just buying the one, you do want to set yourself up for future upgrading. So you need to think about bezel width and um, d um, display connectivity to your GPU. But we'll get into that. But just a reminder that think long term when it comes to sim racing. You don't want to be doing micro upgrades all of the time. And um, especially when it comes to monitors. I know plenty of people who had one monitor. Uh, they bought it because it was cheap. And now they're looking at three monitors. But the monitor they have as their single is just not going to work for them as a triple. So bear that in mind. Okay, the next choice is color. I'm going to let you leave that because uh, most monitors are black anyway. Brightness. Um, now, while we probably going to sit 23 inches from our monitor or less or around that sort of region, you wouldn't think brightness matters all too much. But for one, it's a good indication of good manufacturing. A sub 300 nit brightness, for example, especially sub 250, indicates a poor panel. Now, um, this isn't always the truth, but I think it's a really good filter because um, anything 300 and above, I think, is very well made. 400 and above, when we're getting into the HDR range, which is something you're looking at, uh, obviously, true HDR is 1000. So, I know the marketing, we have a 400 HDR, but I'm just letting you know, true HDR is 1000. So let's move that to 300 nits. Okay, so that's already got rid of quite a few monitors. Now, lower it if you wish. If you're really struggling to find one for your budget, then uh, maybe bring that down to 260 or something. Um, I just feel 250 nit monitors, um, it can be a bit dim. And uh, when with regards to contrast ratio and the advertised pixel refresh, uh, low brightness is usually a bad sign. A bad indication. All right, widescreen, we don't need to tick that because we specified 16 by 9. It's quite an old term now. Curved screen. I don't, I prefer non-curved. 
uh, the math that goes into field of view calculations is very um, complex when it comes to curves because your GPU is outputting a flat image, a 2D image, and your monitor is displaying a 2D image. Um, triple curves, if you think about the nature of the ratio, how it curves, you can't create a flush curve. So, for example, some people have a flat and two curves on the side. Um, but look, it's personal preference. And when I say the math is uh, a little hard to calculate, we are talking about a minute difference. We're not, we're not talking about a lot. My personal preference is flat. Flats are cheaper. They're more widely available. But I know lots of people who loved curved, so go for it. That's fine. Interface. Now, this is the bit I can't help on. This is the bit where you go and look at your GPU and you make sure that you're going to have triple of whatever you choose. Now, for sure, if you have two HDMIs and a display port, for example, you can get adapters. Um, so it's not a problem, but just think ahead. Don't, if you have, for example, two HDMI holes and a display port, just make sure you're getting one with a um, HDMI. It gives you the greater expansion for the future. Now, most monitors will have a HDMI, um, but DisplayPort is always good to look for because when we start talking about res uh, refresh rates, anything above, say, 120, I believe, it, on the HDMI specifications can be quite limiting. Um, HDMI specifications, unfortunately, I'm not going to go into this video, but there's version numbers based on different HDMI, and um, while it can get confusing, um, just make sure when you come to purchase, when you're looking at the monitor, check the um, HDMI version. Make sure it's up to spec for the refresh rate you're looking for. Um, I'll give you one example. A 165 hertz monitor might have a HDMI hole and a display port, but the HDMI will only go up to, for example, 120 hertz. So it's just something to look for. Uh, I'm trying to give you the best general advice that when you go shopping, you make sure you get what you've got. Obviously, down in the comments, any questions, I'm happy to answer. I'm happy to look at the uh, monitor you have a question about. Obviously, um, link in the description for Discord if you uh, want to chat further. Okay, so I'm going to leave this blank for now, hit interface. But uh, most monitors will have a display port, HDMI, and a DVI. You know, it's um, all quite common, especially HDMI. Frame sync. Now, this is an expensive subject, um, especially on the G-Sync side. So this allows you to eliminate tearing without using V-Sync. Um, on the V-Sync subject, I mentioned this probably in three or four videos, you shouldn't use V-Sync when you're um, sim racing because while in your first person shooter games or something, it looks crisp or even sim racing, you see no tearing. Um, it can create lag from input devices and a wheel and pedals are classed as input devices. We are sending signals that we wish to see uh, interpolated on the screen and a delay could be costly in your visual uh, spectrum. So just bear that in mind that you do not want to be using V-Sync. So you want to, I always give the general rule of thumb, you want to frame limit in, for example, iRacing, your um, FPS to the nearest prime number above your maximum monitor refresh rate. So 144 hertz, find the nearest prime number after that. I think um, I think 149, <laughs> I can't remember prime numbers off the top of my head, uh, but that's a good ballpark. So what we're talking about here, FreeSync is the AMD technology, G-Sync is the NVIDIA. It allows um, you to use a pseudo replace V-Sync that works brilliantly with no lag. It prevents tearing. Um, these are expensive options, um, not on the FreeSync side as much, and some FreeSync monitors are G-Sync compatible. But once again, that is an adaptive list that's been growing. Um, so do your research there. There are, I think NVIDIA has a website now where they grade them um, on how good they are at working with compatibility of G-Sync. But um, typically in a good setup, if your GPU is power enough and you get your settings right, you you don't need to worry about this. It can be tough using these technologies when you're using triple screens, you're trying to bang out 144 hertz and you have a mid-level GPU because these technologies only work if you can hold the higher end of the threshold. Um, once you start dipping too far below um, at Barcelona when there's 35 cars, then the technology itself isn't really helping. So um, it depends how premium you wanna go. If, you wanna, if you've got a nice powerful GPU and you want no hassle with tearing, then pick the appropriate, appropriate um, frame seek technology. I'm leaving it. It's not something I'm too bothered about. I get my settings right, but um, 
G-Sync as well is pretty expensive. Um, NVIDIA are working hard on it, but um, FreeSync you find much more popular. Uh, Built-in speakers, I'm just going to leave that at all. But personally, I don't know why you'd want um, to be using speakers on a triple setup because you're going to have sound coming from all three. Uh, Vaser mount, if you have a... Um, a screen stand, a, a part of your rig, then make sure you click, uh, click the applicable one. Okay, so let's go back through a few of the settings we skipped over. First of all, rating, that's just the store, uh, the item rating based on the store. I would leave that for now unless you have a lot of monitors. Uh, but what you typically want to do is go to the end store you're looking at, for example, if it's Amazon and check your reviews there. But this can be helpful, but the problem is some products are um, unreviewed and that's uh, difficult to determine how good it is. Screen size, loaded question. Okay, so anywhere from say 24 to 32 is perfectly acceptable. We're talking about the, we're not talking about ultra wide here, we're talking about a standard 16 by nine monitor. So any smaller than 24, and perhaps you are gonna have your field of view um, a little bit capped. I'm actually at 23.6, but 24, you know, is uh, basically the size it is. So any larger than 32, and I mean, it's possible, don't get me wrong, you can. I mean, do it if you can afford it and you've got the space. But it will take a lot more space than you may be thinking. Like, we're talking um, huge here. 32 is 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 a gold standard. It's amazing. Um, now, remember, the larger your monitor, the, the wider it's stretching your pixels. So if you're running your monitor at 1080p and you go from 24 to 32 inches at the same resolution, I'm not saying it's gonna look worse, I'm just saying the pixels are going to be stretched out more. Uh, we have the pixels per inch, which literally tells us um, how good it's gonna look based on the pixel ratio. I'm sure you've looked at a 1080p image on your phone and a 1080p image on your TV and thought, wow, my phone looks better. Well, that's because you're looking at 1080p crammed into a uh, four or five inch device as opposed to a uh, 50 inch, 60 inch display output in the same resolution. So screen size, I'm gonna set the minimum at 24 inch, or you could do 23.6, that's mine. It's a perfectly acceptable size. I will limit it at 32 now, and we'll take a look at some prices. Resolution. Okay, this is a difficult one, especially in the triple game, because it's for pure aesthetics and how good it looks rather than performance, and in the sim racing world, we are all about performance, I hope. So, 1080p is perfectly acceptable. That's what I run. And my next monitor upgrade, there'll still be 1080p. What 2K and 4K entail is more work for your GPU. Uh, simply put. Uh, especially if you're in the 27 range and you're upgrading to 2K. 27 2K, that's great. Don't go wrong. The picture quality is going to be amazing. Is it that much better than 1080p at 27? Uh, tough call. 1080p at 24 is ideal. 27, I would still say 1080p because remember, we are just talking about load and heat and performance loss with regards to your GPU. Now, if you have a 2080 Ti and uh, you've got all the cooling and you've got a, uh, a top spec CPU, then worry not. You know, uh, triple 2K, great choice. Triple 4K is. Um, is hard no matter what GPU you've got unless and unless you know what you're doing. If you're the kind of guy that just wants to plug them in, have a great experience, crank your settings to high, then I would never recommend 4K at triple. Um, it's a lot of pixels to push, and in a fast motion game like a sim racing, that can be um, awfully difficult to do. So my advice is 1080p for a few reasons. Performance is amazing. The price is cheap. Um, you don't need an understanding of how to crank your settings in uh, in The Sims. And unless you're going to 32 inch, which is the first time you'd ask the question, because having the monitors 23 inches from your face, 32 inch monitors at 1080p, uh, I mean, my eyes, and I think I've got pretty good eyes, I don't notice it. You do notice it if you went to a friend's house and they had 4K or 2K, for example. Uh, sure, you're going to notice it. Is it going to help you drive quicker? Not at all. Is it going to visually impair you in any way? Not at all. So bear that in mind. 1080p is bang on the money. Okay, refresh rate. Now, your average 16x9 monitor that you've got at home and you've not thought about or thought about the word refresh is probably going to be 60 hertz. 
There are a few 70 options, 75, that sort of range. Uh, there was a lot of hoo-ha about 100 a while back, but the new de facto standard for fast-paced motion games is going to be 144. Especially if you're looking at buying the new monitor. And once again, like I say, if you're looking at a single monitor and you want to get two more down the line, I, I implore you to look at a minimum of 144. Um, anything above, you do get diminishing returns, sure. Um, and also we're back to the resolution argument, but this isn't a case of it takes a performance hit. This is more of if you can't push the pixels, then you're not getting the benefit. So if you went and bought a, um, a 165 or a 240 hertz monitor, kudos if you did, by the way, that's on each display, for example. Your GPU has to be pushing those pixels. You, if you've ever checked your FPS, if you aren't getting what your monitors are, you're not seeing it. it refresh rate on a monitor isn't a um, a thing until you push the pixels. So if you have a 144 hertz monitor, but you're only pushing 80 frames a second in iRacing, you aren't getting 144. It's just a max number. You're getting 80. So don't overbuy what you can push um, because otherwise you're going to force your hand into upgrading a GPU and um, that can get expensive. So while I say resolution is a performance hit, Think of refresh rate as a performance goal. So bear that in mind. So I'm not going to limit the max. We'll see what pops up for the prices we look at. But yeah, so for fast paced games, 144, uh, 144 hertz is brilliant. Um, another two benefits for the higher refresh rate is reduced blur and um, perceivable lag. Because end of the day, it's how many times um, a second you get a new picture on the screen. So 144 is a, every second you get 144 pictures on your screen, making up the video that you're using to interpolate how you see the uh, the race. So it's a good thing, is what I'm trying to get at. Response time, gray to gray. This is how quick a pixel can change its color and brightness. So, your average monitor at home could be anywhere from 15 to 20 milliseconds all the way up to 25. If you didn't buy a gaming monitor and you just had an old 16 by 9 monitor lying around, um, you're probably going to notice it being quite slow. Um, this is vitally important. Um, and sorry, I misspoke. When I said about the blur on refresh rate, I actually meant response time. Apologies. When I said um, earlier in the video about blur I, I meant in response time this is where you get the motion blur feeling um any in fast paced action so if you're approaching an apex really quickly and you get that perceivable blur rather than a crisp feeling it's bad response time now you want to max that at five uh there'll be discussions on it i'm sure people will disagree you want to aim for the lowest possible diminishing returns once you get down really low yes of course um Personally, I'd aim for one millisecond. Um, I would accept two, especially when it comes to grey to grey. So the old, the, the other standard is BTW, black to white or white to black. I forget what round it is. But grey to grey isn't, I feel, the best way of judging a pixel's response time. So if it was grey to grey, I'd be looking more in the two millisecond range as a maximum white to black or black to white i forget what the other standard is because uh, obviously this is going to filter but you must check the monitor we click on to make sure that you get in the response time you want advertised so my ballpark bigger figure would be gray to gray two milliseconds and that other one whether it's white to black or black to white i think it's white to black um five seconds is fine because that requires the pixel to change its color completely for um so gray to gray is an easier transition for a pixel is what i'm trying to get at Okay, panel type. Um, <laughs> this is another one. It's difficult. So IPS, in-plane switching, is the highest visual quality. TN, uh, twisted pneumatic, I believe. Um, this is, I'm going to say the poorest color reproduction. But when I say that, please don't think I'm saying a TN monitor be bad. There are amazing TM panels out there. I'm just trying to tell you the the the, uh, the average difference between them. And VA, vertical alignment. They're your three choices, really. I mean, you're not going to be looking at OLED for a uh, gaming monitor unless you're uh, absolutely minted. Um, 
vertical alignment is a good blend between the two. It's got almost the visual quality of an IPS and the, uh, sorry, I didn't mention that TN also is super fast response times, like pixel response time and refresh rates is very easy to be quick on a TN. Uh, IPS is quite difficult. It can be done, but it's more difficult to be fast, refresh and low response times. Okay, so IPS, sorry, I'm jumping over myself. IPS usually is the highest visual quality, but it's the hardest for the manufacturer to push fast with low response times. TN is at the complete opposite. So typically it has the worst viewing angles, the worst color reproduction, but it's the fastest response time and usually the lowest um, response time, highest refresh. VA is somewhere in between. You have the color fidelity almost of an IPS, super good contrast ratios, um, but they usually struggle with response time, not refresh rate. Refresh rate is quite easy for a manufacturer to pump hard. Uh, but VA usually struggles with um, response times below 5, for example. Um, they're all good. Um, TN's probably going to work out the cheapest and the most popular. To be honest, most sim racers, their triple setup, no matter even if they spent a couple of hundred dollars on each, is probably going to be a TN panel. So I'm just going to tick the three of them. Now, there are other types, but a few of them are just Samsung. OLED, once again, is... Um, not what us mere mortals are looking for. Okay, let's just limit the price a little bit and take a look at what we've got. All right, so how many have we got it down to? 19. There you go, it's a little bit more manageable. So we will, we're ordered by price. So let's have a quick scan for screen size. So we've got a size like mine. We've got some 24s, 24.5, bit of a random size. Um, some 27s. Okay, so at this price point, what we're looking at, 179 to 249, so it's very nicely uh, tightly knitted. I would say the 27s there are fantastic. So what I would do now, well, as I say, this all depends on your budget. I'm gonna limit to 27. And that is gonna bring our list down drastically. So what I'm gonna do is up the price a little bit just to see what we're missing out on. Okay, so let's have a scan down. Still all 27s. Okay, so we've got some IPS panels, some TN, a VA, lots of TN panels, as you can see. We have got some reviews. They're all 16 by 9. So unfortunately, one thing you can't filter down here, which I wish you could, is bezel thickness. So this is extremely important, again, for the guy that's going to buy one and then wish to upgrade to three down the line. It's the mistake I made, and I wish it on no one. Thick bezels on a single monitor doesn't doesn't matter at all when you then look to get two more of them thick bezels are a problem so this isn't something i can filter by but when you come to look or you can look at the thumbnails as you can see that is an incredibly thin bezel so that's always good but obviously make sure you do your research um, have a look around get a review on youtube of each monitor but let's have a quick flick of any of these bezels look absurdly thick we seem to be there you go um, so for example, if this was the cheapest monitor and you went out and bought it, those bezels are going to be unforgiv unforgivably thick when it comes to running three of them side by side. So make sure you look for a uh, nice thin bezel. So what have we got here? Let's have a quick look at what one I would pick out of this list. Remember, this will be different the, the time you come to look. Ace is a fantastic brand. ViewSonic's popular, but more the budget end. MSI Optics is a fantastic monitor. And I've just noticed 165 VA. So I do like the VAs if you can get the response time because like I said, you have the visual fidelity of an IPS, but um, less of the slower response time tendencies with an IPS. Some IPS panels, they struggle with ghosted when it comes to very low response times. Now they usually have workarounds in the um, OSW, the, the monitor menu, but they usually, they usually are, any setting that you usually set to try and compensate for that, I find is usually worse. So I am going to have a look at this one, if the bezels are thin. Let's take a look. All right, so I'm seeing a little bit of extra bezel, unfortunately. So here's the bezel, but here what looks like essentially dead display, you know, um, a black border. So it looks like they fooled us a little bit on the small picture. The monitor is 
delicious. But what else what other options have we got? Especially at the 165. Let's look at this one. Asus makes some good monitors as well. Um, okay, so they've got no dead area. It's all bezel, and it does look pretty thin. But I think we could do better. Just I don't think we can do better at the... Oh, there's a 240 hertz monitor. But you'd want to have a beastly GPU to run that. And we are paying... There was a bit of a price jump. So... Let's have a quick look. This is literally my first time looking as well. That looks good. No, I'm not a BenQ fan. Oh, that looks good. Zero frame. Yeah, it looks amazing. Right, so obviously you have the choice between going for this monitor, which looks, I'm not going to lie, it does look amazing. Uh, I am seeing a slight black border, so it looks like they... Yeah, it made the bezel look thinner than it was, so always be aware of that and do your research. You know, um, I'm sure you're seeing here. I don't know if I close the image. Uh, all the stores where it's available, so we can click on B and H, and we'll end up more at the uh, you know the actual store for it, so we can read and find out things like the refresh rate. Uh, this has the AMD Radeon FreeSync. Um, so make sure you come into the store as well. Don't just uh, rely on the specifications in PC Part Picker, do your research. But I am really happy with this one I'm going to go for, for example. Uh, also, we have a price tracker down here. So we can see Walmart and B&H. We can see the actual price adjustments. So if you see a recent high, like actually we're seeing here, perhaps wait for this price to come back down. So what we're looking at, 242. Right now it's 249. So might be worth waiting. And you can set a little price alert. So you could set that to 243 and let me know. So, yep, at my first flick through while live on this uh, recording, this ticks literally every box I was talking about. Uh, as long as it has VESA mounts and the VESA mounts the correct size and it has the um, cable in that you'd want. So we've got 400 nits of brightness, which is absolutely awesome. So it's got DVI dual link and HDMI. So that's, that's great. If your GPU has triple HDMI, then if you bought three of these, HDMI in each, and you're good. Uh, like I said, make sure you check the um, HDMI version number of the monitor and check that what its peak re uh, refresh rate can reach. But um, I think 145 is usually okay, but just do your research. Uh, you can check reviews down here, um, but you can also check reviews at the store or all of the stores it's at. So let's have a quick look at a larger monitor for you so you can take a look at what options are up that end as well. So the reason I flew over the 24s early in the video was we saw that the price variance was so worth it for making the jump to 27. Uh, what am I doing? 20, let's just cap that at 30. All right, so all the monitors have disappeared. That's probably going to be more to do with the resolution and the response time because the larger a monitor, the more expensive you can get. But let's increase the price anyway, see what we get. See if it takes a bite. As you can see, we are not. So let's try adjusting a few of our parameters. Let's turn off the resolution to see what we get. And move this to a 5. There you go. So, well, we had one in the 1 millisecond. So what was it? Yeah, resolution. So there are monitors that are 1080p, 32. But you can see why, like I mentioned earlier in the video, a 32 at 1080p, especially really close to your eye. Uh, it's fine. Like, honestly, it has no performance gain. Visually, it's not going to slow you down for sim racing. Um, but as you can see, we took a significant price jump. We did have to, for example, in this monitor, take a, tra a trade off in response time. This one's pretty good. Um, 32. Just bear in mind, you need a powerful GPU if you're going to be pushing three 2K monitors. The size has nothing to do with the performance. The um, resolution does. And for example, a harder hit GPU will push out less. Refresh rate, you know, if you double the load of what your GPU has to do, then um, it's going to be twice as hard to push the refresh rate you want. So that's not a bad monitor. Let's look at the bezels, though. That's the next big thing. Uh, it looks pretty good. Yep. Looks like a really good option. Look at that. That might be a bit of a marketing uh, cleverness with shadows and lighting, but it's pretty thin, and that's an important factor. I wish there was a filter to break it down, but unfortunately there's not. Okay, so let's quickly summarize what we learned. Budget, obviously that's up to you. Think ahead, don't just buy one monitor that's 
pretty good and then uh, hurt yourself when you come to upgrade to two more. Resolution is purely for looks and is going to hurt your performance. Refresh rate, it's great to aim high, but just make sure your GPU can push it, especially with three, because um, otherwise you're going to go out and spend all that money and then feel terrible and end up upgrading your GPU. So just make sure you factor that in. Uh, IPS, TN, and VA, and VA. IPS is the pretty looking one, but uh, prices struggle to bring the um, response time ghost in and refresh rate, that sort of numbers in the right direction. TN is the complete opposite. Um, now, when a set has poor viewing angles, obviously us sim raisers are lucky because we have a fixed position and monitors are pointing us, so off angle is not something we struggle with, but something to bear in mind. But they're very easy to push fast response times and low, uh, fast refresh rates and low response times. VA is somewhere in the middle, but usually struggles with higher response time. But if you can find one that's one millisecond, then um, go for it. It's a perfect middle ground is VA. Very good contrast ratios, which can look amazing if you're a... Uh, you know, in the uh, on the track in the background, I think. Brightness is a good indication of panel quality. Curved, argue amongst yourselves. I, I just prefer flat, but it doesn't matter. Interface, just making sure you've got the uh, correct GPU. Frame sync, do your research. Uh, G-Sync can work out quite expensive. Free sync can work with NVIDIA uh, GPUs, uh, but do your own research. NVIDIA's got a web, uh, link. If I find it, I'll drop it down in the description. Um, but unfortunately, the list is, is added to so slowly. By the time you find a new monitor that comes out, it may never be added. And Vaser mounting is dependent on your sim rig and the setup you've got. Just make sure it has it. And obviously bezel width is something you need to do your own research on because uh, I can't do it in here. All right, I really hope that helps. It's tough out there. It's tough to decide, uh, but I hope this enlightens you and makes you make the right decision when it comes to picking your next monitor. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions down in the comments or um, Discord if you really wanna drill down and want me to have a look at your GPU to monitor offset in performance, and I'm happy to do that. But, um, yeah, I hope you enjoy it, okay? I think I rambled quite a bit there, so uh, I hope that was okay. All right, thank you very much. Like if you like this video, sub if you want to see the next one, bell notification if you want to know when the next video drops. But other than that, thank you for all the support and the nice comments. It means the world to me. All right, thank you very much, and I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye.